Hi guys, how are you? I haven't been filming as much, so I thought a way to convince myself to do that would be to lay in bed and film because this is like the only time that I'm not running around trying to catch up on everything that I missed from laying around too much. So um, I've been doing okay. I've been keeping up with the class that I've been taking and it's exciting to be back in that setting. Um, it's it feels very strange, like it's hard for me to get used to, and I keep thinking, wow, I, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. For so many people, it's something that they take for granted, and it's something very ordinary, but for me, it's just exciting. I'm thrilled that I'm able to sit there for two hours. Sometimes I have to get up and walk around and get my blood moving and then come back. And the other night was really rough. I got really woozy and lightheaded and didn't think I would make it out. And there are times walking up the steps is hard on me with the tachycardia, but I'm doing it. So I'm trying to look at it as long as I can just get through it and feel like I'm accomplishing something that, that makes it worthwhile. I'm excited because I feel like my future is really opening up and my dreams are strong and if I stay passionate and strong and just get through it, then I will. So, in other news, on top of keeping up with the one class that I've been taking twice a week and all the homework, I've been trying to keep up with my photography business. I've been neglecting it a little bit. I haven't taken as many photos, and I just got over to the shop today to put more up. So. I'm glad that I finally did that. It's so hard to juggle everything. We are on our way to a doctor's appointment. It's about an hour and 45 minute drive and her transmission is a slipping. And that's not good. So I'm getting really nervous, scared. I never did this before. I went to the doctor in Pennsylvania and he gave me a ton of tests to do. There's blood tests and saliva tests and a urine test. I think that this doctor has some good insight and that he's just nice and will actually listen to me while I talk about my symptoms. They test for all different things, everything from Lyme disease to like lead poisoning and mercury, food allergies and cortisol levels and different things that might be affecting me and causing my POTS symptoms. So when you have POTS, it's important that you know that there are conditions that cause POTS. And if you can find a condition that is causing your POTS symptoms, then you can fix it. I've been to so many bad doctors, I've learned not to expect much from them, but I'm hoping this is a good appointment and leads to a better treatment plan. So that's about it. I will update you soon. So I'm looking forward to seeing what these tests show me and my hopes are that he finds something he can help me with. In the meantime, I just try to live as normal a life as possible. Monday I try not to overdo it because I'm saving my energy for Tuesday which is when I have my class at 6. All Tuesday I really have to limit what I do or I get too tired. For example yesterday I went to Bed Bath & Beyond. This is what happens if you and your mother are both chronically sick. This is the kind of discussions that you have. Today is Thursday at 1 o'clock. I am not at work, and I am not at school. I am in the car with my mother on our way to Bed Bath & Beyond buying filters for an air purifier that I bought thinking that it would help my health. I went over to Michael's to buy frames. By the time I got home, I was like laying here. I couldn't even move. I was exhausted. Tonight, I actually have to go to class, and I'm trying to save up energy, so I'm not driving. and. I can't really do much on the days that I have class, otherwise I'm exhausted and I can't go. <laughs> but sometimes you just have to laugh about it because it really is ridiculous. I'm trying to figure out what you guys would like to hear from me or what it is about POTS that you guys would like to hear about. I have so many tips about getting through life with POTS and adapting, so if you would like a video about things like that, that might be fun. Um, so just let me know what you want to see. When you're sick and looking for treatment or for a diagnosis, you do a lot of driving and traveling. 
This is the woman that taught me to laugh at life. Oh, come on. <laughs> she taught me to laugh at everything, and, yeah. I, and I do. And I was just talking yeah. to my friend, Andrew, the other night about that. We were saying how you have to have a sense of humor, because if you don't, you'll just give up. You have to just find the humor in the fact that it's in the fact that you're suffering and the fact that it's so pathetic sometimes you just have to laugh at it.